What's going on there, folks? Good afternoon. Good Monday afternoon. It is the Earthmaster here on this beautiful day here in California. Monday, March 7, 2022 is the date, about 12.33 p.m. California time. And the latest quake out there on the Earthquake 3D globe shows a... What do we got out here? Looks like a uh, 2.5 in the area of the uh, Middle East, it looks like. Let's go ahead and check out this latest earthquake activity here on the globe from the USGS. Of course, that is from the EMSC model, but uh, looking in general over there towards the Middle East area and a regional view here. Still, uh, of course, they're not going to show the 3.0 earthquake activity, but they're definitely uh, getting some movement over there, as you've seen on the globe. Looked like probably around the uh, Syria area or Iraq region with that three that was coming in. As uh, far as regional earthquake activity goes here in this region, Albania 4.4 earthquake. Had that uh, last night sometime, the earthquake coming in there. <clears throat> also some movement up around Afghanistan with 4.2, pretty deep movement into the mountains there. Looking at the big picture here, following yesterday's 6.0 push, we had that 6.0 in the Fiji region, of course, we had the other one. Let's see if I can bring that up here on the seven days map, uh, seven day map here. Uh, let's see, that was over here in the South Sandwich Trench. Had that six pointer down here, and uh, could swear we had another one somewhere up here around the uh, the uh, South America region. But uh, too many earthquakes on the globe or on the uh, map to take note right now. But either way, that 6.1 super deep earthquake last night into the area of Fiji, Tonga, Samoa region, way down in there into the uh, Tonga Trench. This area here is pretty much a starting point, I think, looking at historical data for deep earthquake movement. All kind of begins right here. And that's kind of what uh, uh, it kind of, the trend that it kind of keeps here with this deep movement. It's always got deep activity here in this region. It's almost like the, the uh, birthing spot, if you will, for activity. Uh, we haven't seen any further movement on the USGS map here around New Zealand. I'm going to check the EMSC model here in a little bit, uh, but we did have some uh, further activity up in Hawaii and also in Australia where they had a 4.3 earthquake in the Tennant Creek area. That's somewhat of a sizable earthquake out there uh, in the, uh, looks like the Northern Territory region. Man, I'd love to get out there in Australia. I just, uh, I know a lot of people are scared of the uh, wildlife and whatnot out there, but I think it'd be so awesome to visit uh, this region one of these days. There's a lot of stuff we got to do, right? We got to definitely got to move around. I hate staying in one spot. <clears throat> Life's too short for that. 4.3, looking at the regional view. Look at this. Look at this historical data around the Tennant Creek area. Something out here. Um, that almost looks like it's... Uh, well, let's see what we got here. Historical data shows that you can get some uh, kind of a big, bigger quakes out here where we've seen that 4.3 today spread out over uh, about a 20 to 30 mile radius here in this area of Australia around Tennant Creek. Five to six magnitude earthquakes have been recorded uh, in this region historically since about 1900. Uh, not 100% certain on the reason for that uh, plate system or possibly uh, uh, volcanic. I'm not for sure. I'm not a whole... Uh, not 100% certain on the movement that's going on out here. I haven't studied this area uh, in my studies throughout the years, but I may have to jump on that. Uh, let's see what we got as far as satellite view goes. Well, out there in the desert of Australia, not 100% certain what's out there. Anybody else know? Let us know in the comments uh, if, you, if you're aware of what this activity is out here. Like I said, we've seen a pretty wide swath of of earthquakes since about 1900 or so. Uh, not for sure on volcanic activity. It looks like there's some signs of uh, those actually look like dry lake beds. But uh, I'll, I'll, I'll see what I can pull up here and cover this a little bit later tonight in the update video. It's kind of cool uh, looking at that region as uh, far as just a uh, just that circular pattern of uh, earthquakes out there. Kind of looks like it's volcanic but uh, We'll look into it for sure and provide a little bit further update. Either way, 4.3 in that region uh, overnight. Actually, earlier this morning, it looks like. Uh, what else we got here? We haven't seen any subsequent activity up here along the Papua New Guinea area or the Solomon Islands following that 6.1. Uh, looks like most of the movement, though, has been up here the northern end. I did say watch for adjustment up here as well. 
Uh, sometimes it seems like if this area is pretty well compacted and uh, you know still able to build up some strain without releasing the earthquake, uh, that these areas up here to the north do move, and that's kind of what we're looking at today with a, a little uh, flux of earthquakes out here over the last 24 hours. Some of it shallow, some of it deep into the Japan Trench region, and also backside of Japan here, a 4.8 in the area here of the Yama, Yama, Yamato Basin. Looks like uh, that's correct, hopefully. Uh, yeah, so pretty shallow earthquake activity on the backside there. And of course, some deeper and shallower movement here along the trenches. Uh, up here to the north, the Aleutian Island chain. A little bit of a uh, uh, movement here kicking up. Stand by for just one second here. Uh, looks like up around the volcanoes, um, not seeing anything significant take place up there around Davidoff Volcano as well. And a little quake here towards the subduction zone at 3.9. Uh, the rest of Alaska up here got uh, some movement up into the northern part and also over here way west around the White Mountain Alaska area, 2.5 kicking up here. Of course, we had this uh, one earthquake last night north of Canada into the Beaufort Sea area, close to the Beauf Beaufort Sea. Uh, 4.8 coming in last night. No subsequent further movement noted on the Canada map, at least according to the USGS. Looking at the states, though, we are looking at uh, a little bit of heightened activity over the Northern California area and also the uh, Pacific Northwest. We're seeing, uh, starting to see a little return of movement throughout this area. It has been relatively quiet, I'd say, over the past five days or so. We haven't really seen too much movement at all in terms of even microquakes in this area. So, Getting some movement scattered out and about. A couple volcanoes being hit today. Mount St. Helens, and Mount Hood. Seeing a little earthquake uh, at that region. Not for sure what's going on here with the USGS uh, map. What's going on, USGS? Are we getting invaded here? What is going on here? That's kind of odd. That's really weird. Sometimes I think the USGS is watching and just likes to throw earthquakes up on the map and, uh, and then uh, mess with things. But... Maybe that's just my paranoia. Who knows? <laughs> 2.0 looks like uh, this one was way south of Mount Hood area. A negative quake, 3.5 just to the south of the summit at Mount Hood. Not for sure what's up with that. That could be a uh, well, negative. That's kind of weird, but either way, 3.5 kilometer below the surface. Uh, let's check out the seismic activity here in the region of the standby for a second here just checking a couple suspicious uh activity today on the um on the system here but i think we're okay now okay so looking at the tremor map northern california got hit pretty good last night southern end of the cascadia 276 epicenters i'm guessing though with all the uh, subsequent uh earthquake activity up here in the pacific northwest we should see the return of swarm uh, in the tremor department up here into the northern part. We'll see a little bit later on in the update. But I uh, wanted to check out Mount Hood seismic activity real quick around the region here at the seismograph uh, three-component broadband station down here in the south part near Timberline, Oregon. Uh, BHC station. See what these folks are reporting. <sighs> Coffee. Coffee's good any time of the day, right? Uh, so what do we got here? It's kind of hard to decipher. That could be the earthquake right there in question there around uh, just prior to 1020, it looks like. A little quake. And also a couple other small, smaller quakes here. Not for sure the readings on this other activity. Uh, whatever it is, it looks like it's... Um, let's check yesterday's general activity. That could be uh, distant earthquake activity as well. Uh, but that's a lot of it, isn't it? That's quite a bit. Um... Here's some S waves kicking in from probably some of the sixes that came in yesterday, shaking things up. But uh, definitely some earthquake activity around Mount Hood um, yesterday as well. Some localized uh, quakes there in the region. Check out uh, Mount St. Helens. Uh, volcanic seismicity map. Pretty cool. PNSN is an awesome network. I love looking at all their data. And there's a lot more than what we show here on this channel. So uh, if you Check it out for yourself if you're interested in seeing uh, uh, historical data as well. They keep up a uh, pretty good amount of data in their systems. There's the activity. Most of it from uh, 
past couple weeks or so, past month. Zoom right in here to the summit area, crater area, and check out this uh, broadband station here. Let's see if we get this keyed up here. Just a little on the odd side, just a little slow. Yeah, there's that uh, activity showing up um, local localized earthquake activity very spiky spiky is the key word when it comes to local readings on a graph there's a couple of them there let's check out yesterday's activity see if they've uh, uh there's some more there's some activity as well in that region uh kicking up see that black uh, line of uh, activity kicking up uh, localized quakes there a couple of them down here in the south part as well blue spike up here a little bit of quakes going on there i need to get to this is from yesterday too so i don't think they had too many going on there uh, as far as yesterday's movement go uh, goes there at mount st Helens. so uh, definitely some quakes not being added on in the region there uh, but we'll see. See what the trimmer map looks like tonight. A little bit of activity off the coast here in Northern Cal. That's kind of expected. 2.0 back building pressure along the southern plate, the Gorda Plate here. Uh, right about the uh, Gorda Plate and the Pacific Plate boundary. Well to the west of the Mendocino Triple Point area. 7.8 kilometers for that 2.8. But uh, that's really expected here when we see the trimmer activity ramp up here in the, um, in the uh, region where we're seeing it. Northern California region. So I'm really surprised that we haven't seen further activity here. That's just confirmation there of uh, continued building activity. But then again, these little quakes here kind of uh, tell that telltale sign, telltale sign as well. Quiet versus activity. You know, it's, it's hard to say in this major uh, subduction zone. Let's see, what do we got here? Eastern part of Sierra Nevada uh, around the Antelope Valley. Oh, Mono Lake. This is actually Mono Lake, Antelope Valley up here. Not a whole lot going on up there today, but uh, Mono Lake area getting in on some activity at 3.5 around the Bodie Hills north of Mono Lake, uh, about nine kilometers or so for that earthquake. Long Valley Super Volcano today looks pretty dull. Nothing going on in the earthquake department there, although uh, past couple days has been fairly active. Let's bring up seven days of magnitudes, and you can see we had some swarming out here just on the western side of the Long Valley Caldera and also here to the southwest. But today, that's a different story. Not a whole lot of activity kicking up there today. Ridgecrest starting to fill in. We can see that fracture zone there. The uh, uh, July 4th, July 5th sequence there a couple years ago during the big earthquakes. You can see that well-defined movement. Uh, southern part of the state lighting up a little bit here with some earthquakes at the southern end of the San Jacinto Fault Zone and also off the Elsinore Fault System. One of the little segments here showing some small microquakes uh, kicking up in the area. Also Bay Area around the Concord San Leandro area. So we got uh, two different fault systems here. We got the Calaveras and the Hayward Fault Zone all kind of just showing a little bit of activity today. Just some microquakes throughout Nevada as well. Uh, kind of filling in the Intermountain West region a little bit here around Cedar, Utah. Let's check out Yellowstone. I know we didn't get uh, that covered last night. Uh, we'll go ahead and check out that movement here at Yellowstone today or right now. And uh, there is the larger earthquake from, uh, I believe that's the one from last night, right? Let's check out that uh, timestamp here. The one in question is going to be this one right here, just prior to 0600 UTC time. A good way to match them up is to, uh, well, just check, check the, uh, uh, the uh, timestamps here. Most of these timestamps run not only in local, but also UTC time. And for that deep 6.1 earthquake, it was at 0534. So we go back over here and check 05. Yeah, yeah, 0530 would be right about here. So we can expect some of the S waves and whatnot to be registered a couple minutes later, uh, arriving there at Yellowstone National Park. So I'm I'm uh, highly certain that that reading you're seeing all over Yellowstone there is indeed that super deep 6.1 we seen in Fiji uh, last night. Uh, let's see what we got for localized activity. Getting a little bit of a uh, fracturing it looks like or ice quakes over here in the madison area uh see all these little spikes there indicative I'm, I'm pretty certain these are ice quakes uh at least that's what they look like over here around upper falls as well borehole area showing signs of that movement as well looks like some type of uh, uh very small ice quakes uh let's see what we got here 
some of the activity showing up here on this station as well. So uh, what do we got over here, though? I'm not for sure what that movement is. That could be some of the uh, the uh, ice quake activity as well. And this movement here just looks a little odd. Uh, not 100% certain if it's legit or not. Uh, some of that activity looks like it is showing up over here around Little West Thumb, this uh, Lake Butte area. Then again, I'm not for sure if there's geysers uh, popping off here in the lake area or not. That's, um, I don't think that's not for sure what's over there. But uh, definitely some weird reading once again kind of showing up on these two stations. Remember yesterday or a couple days ago, we had that uh, similar type of movement showing up here in the Parker Peak. But it looks as though that... Uh, activity has since kind of died down a little bit but uh, there's definitely been some odd measurements going on here at a couple of these seismograph stations over the last few days and I, I still think some of it is uh, in general localized quakes uh, or ice quakes and then also some of it is distant larger quakes uh, that are just being picked up by individualized tuned stations um, compared to these other ones that don't pick up anything aside from a uh, um, localized activity. What's going on with this station here? Yeah, see, it's kind of just all out of whack. Uh, but uh, nothing, that's just odd. So we'll come back and look at that later on tonight, folks. Uh, get rid of these hundreds of windows I just opened up. Uh, get back to the quakes. And uh, what else we got here? Uh, let's see here. Puerto Rico, Puerto Rico area. What do we got? A little bit of swarming kicking up here once again in the southwest uh, corner of Puerto Rico and also kind of up here around the Brit British Vir Virgin Islands. See if I can spit it out, spit it out up here around the Puerto Rico Trench region and uh, over here around the Haiti area west here, getting in on some uh, movement, 4.1 kicking up on the northern edge here. All right, folks, I'm going to jump off here. Probably not going to get notified of this video, so if you are watching this video, uh, it's because you probably searched it out or searched the channel, but... Uh, um, yeah, I've used up all my notifications here on YouTube uh, yesterday doing that little check. And then, of course, the stream went down early this morning. So that used up a, uh, a uh, another notification as well. So if you guys are watching this update video, it's just because uh, I kind of searched it out. So I did not put out a notification for this due to the three uh, notification limit in the on the uh, YouTube uh, YouTube policies there as far as putting out videos so let's see what else we got here we kind of want to check the three magnitude range here on the New Zealand area see what these guys are reporting a little cluster of quakes here at the northern end once again down here on the southern end a couple threes kicking off here uh, looks like uh, earlier today so a lot of this activity occurring following that uh, deep 6.1 so we are starting to see a little bit of sign of that adjustment down here in the south and over here to the west. But uh, still pretty active Middle America Trench and the South America region. These guys, uh, these guys, you know, showing about the same activity here as the USGS is on the 4.0. So, all right, folks, we're going to jump off here. Enjoy the day. Um, stay safe out there. Live stream is back up and running. And, um, it is what it is. We had a little power issue this morning, so we'll. Uh, I think we got that fixed, and everything looks primed and ready to go. Have a good day, folks. Stay safe. We will chat you guys a little bit later on this evening with the update video. Peace out.